let's learn some new techniques that we can use when we're dealing with 3D in After Effects. We'll be specifically concentrating on the Cinema 4D Renderer, which is a newer render in After Effects, and it allows you to do a bunch of things that were not previously available in After Effects. I have a composition that we'll start working on. This contains a dark solid, a sign shape, which is this blue shape, and then I have some text that says the word love. The text and the sign layers are already 3D layers. As you know, if we're dealing with 3D layers, we have the ability to orbit around our scene. Currently, both of these layers are existing in Z space at the same location. So if I come into the position properties, you can see I have X, Y, and Z. And if I alter the Z position, we'll go to the sign layer and let's just move this back by 50 pixels. Now, if I use my orbit around cursor tool, you can see that the love text appears slightly in front of the sign text. But one of the things that we can see here is that both of these elements are completely flat. It's as if I just took a piece of paper and I'm looking at it on the side. So they have no depth. They just are flat elements. With the new Cinema 4D render, we can actually extrude these elements and give them some depth. Let's talk about how we can do that. The first thing that I need to do is I need to switch from Classic 3D to the Cinema 4D render. I'm going to choose that. If we look at our composition, and I'll just open a new view so we don't have to keep going back and forth, you can see that nothing has really changed. Everything looks the same as it did prior to me making this switch. But if we open up these two 3D layers, you will see that we now have geometry options and material options. And both of these elements are going to contain those new properties. If we go ahead and look in the geometry options, we have some things that we can alter as well as the material options. If I want to be able to extrude these elements, I need to transform them because native text that we create in After Effects, which is what the love text is, or the sign shape, which is artwork that I created in Illustrator, are still not the correct type of artwork so that we can make these changes. What we'll do is we'll right click on the sign shape layer and we're going to go into create and I'm going to choose create shapes from vector layer. Once I do this, After Effects has created a new layer. The sign shape layer, the visibility has been turned off, and now I have an identical layer called sign shape outlines. If we open the sign shape outlines, we have the contents, the transform, the geometry options, and material options. If we open geometry options, we now have some new settings available. If we compare this to the original sign shape layer, you'll see that originally we only had curvature and segments, but now we have bevel depth, whole bevel depth, and extrusion depth. You also have a new group of properties called contents, and this is going to contain the path information. We'll augment the extrusion depth. I'm going to increase this value and we'll make it about 50. If you look at the top view, you can now see that this particular shape has more depth. If we go to the active camera view and we orbit, you're going to see that the sign shape that we had created now has more depth. It contains more mass. I'm going to do undo and we're going to do a similar type of thing to the love text. It also is worth mentioning that at this point, we really don't need this sign shape layer. So I'm just going to delete that to keep my timeline a little more tidy. In regards to our text layer, if we want to create extrusions on this, we're going to need to convert this as well. So I'll right click, we'll go to create, and this time we're going to choose create shapes from text. When we do this, once again, we get a new layer called Love Outlines. 
At this point, we don't need the original love layer. That can just be deleted. If we open up the love outlines, you'll see that when the text is selected, it's selected as individual pieces, individual letters. And if we look into contents, each letter has its own sub property and we can twirl open these different settings and make changes to the various options. If we go into the geometry options, we now have the ability to extrude. So once again, I'm going to extrude this particular element and we'll extrude this to about 70. The love text now has mass. And if we spin around in our active camera, both of these items have some sort of mass. If we go to this side, you'll see how they have depth associated with them. Now from the front, we don't really see anything different. And the reason why is because we need a light. Let's go ahead and create a light. I'm going to go to layer, new light, and I'll just go ahead and create a spotlight. I'm going to use the settings that I have right here, and I'm going to turn cast shadows on. I'll click okay. And as you can see, I now have a light. And what we'll do is we'll open up our spotlight We'll go to light options. We're going to increase our cone angle. So this encompasses our scene a little bit. And you'll notice a couple of things. The first thing is that there's a little bit of shadowing on our love text. And that is because this item has some sort of depth associated to it. We are going to see the edges once we have light in our scene. And this is gonna become more apparent when I rotate my camera angle so that I can see the sides of this particular shape. Now that we have the light in place, if we go back into the geometry options, let's just zoom in so you can see. We can make changes to the bevel style. So if we go ahead and change this to angular, and now we make adjustments to the bevel depth, which is going to control the size of the bevel, you're going to see that I have more of a bevel that starts to appear on the edge of my text. This is using an angular style. If we make this concave, you'll see that the style of the text changes slightly. Now it's as if the text is a little bit more layered. And then we have convex, and this is going to create more of a softer, smoother type of edge. You will make changes to these settings depending on the type of edge that you're interested in having. I'm going to set mine to angular and we'll just pump the bevel depth up to about eight to give this quite a bit more of a bevel. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit more so we can see everything that's appearing within our scene. Let's go into our sign shape and once again, I'm going to turn on the bevel. I think I'll use convex so that this one will be a little bit smoother. And then we'll just increase the bevel depth. And let's make this about five. In addition to being able to control the edges by using the geometry options, we also have the ability to augment the material option settings. We've looked at casting shadows. If we turn cast shadows on or off, our object will cast shadows. We can turn on or off whether we want the item to accept shadows or accept lights. The appears in reflections is going to control if the layer will appear in other reflective layers reflections. This can be turned on and off. This will tie in with the reflection intensity which will control how much of other reflective 3D objects are going to interact with this particular item. Reflective sharpness controls the sharpness and the blurriness of the reflections, and reflection roll-off will control the intensity of reflections at certain angles. If we want our item to have more of a metallic type of look, we will keep the metal at 100. If we bring this all the way down, you'll see that the item is going to not have such a shiny reflective type of look. I'm gonna leave that back up at 100. 
you can go in and make adjustments to these different sorts of settings. And as you can see, we have a lot of new ways in which we can work with our elements. We really are able to convert our elements into true 3D objects instead of just allowing them to move within 3D space. Now they're going to actually have depth associated with them. When you're working with the Cinema 4D render, you may find that sometimes, depending on the complexity of your project, when you try to preview your project or run a RAM preview, it really takes a long time. If you are working in a project, you're going to want to be able to preview those things a little bit faster. So if you go to your composition settings dialog box and you click on the 3D render, this is going to allow you to set the render. It also will tell you if you're using Cinema 4D, the types of things that are going to be enabled. And some of the things that we have been able to use in After Effects will be disabled. So you can't use blending modes with Cinema 4D. So just keep that in mind, along with these other things that are listed in this dialog box. What I did want to point out to you here is that if you click the Options button, this is going to open up the Cinema 3D Renderer options. This will give you access to the quality slider, which allows you to adjust the rendering quality of the composition. If you set this to higher quality outputs, it's going to require longer time in regards to rendering. This setting is going to determine how the Cinema 4D renderer draws the 3D layers. The draft setting is good for previewing your renders. It's going to take the least amount of time to draw your 3D layers. Typical is a typical range and is usually fine for most final renders. The extreme setting is used for scenes that contain complex opacity or elements that are highly reflective. So you'll need to set the correct setting when you're ready to output your project so that the project gets rendered in the optimal way. I did want to mention this to you as if you are outputting a project, you may want to up this setting. I'm going to leave mine in between draft and typical so that the performance of After Effects is going to be a little bit quicker. But when you are ready to render out your final project, you may need to make adjustments to this dialog box so that you will get the quality settings that you expect from this particular feature within After Effects. I'll go ahead and click OK just to accept these settings, but I did want to show you where you could locate these things in case you need to augment them in any way. Pretty much any element that you create within After Effects can be converted into this three-dimensional type of element. You just need to remember that in order to be able to see the depth, you need to work with lights. And if the element is a text-based element or something that you've imported from Illustrator, you're going to need to convert it to an outline within After Effects so that After Effects is able to create this sort of rendering on your element. As I mentioned, these settings will only work with the Cinema 4D renderer. If we go back to Classic 3D, you'll see that my elements are now converted to these flat objects. They still are going to exist in 3D space, but they're not going to have the same sort of weight and depth associated with them. Using this renderer, you have a lot of ways in which you can really start to augment and make your scene a true 3D type of scene.